Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Alison Jean is reflecting on the powerful symbolism that the renaming of a boulevard in honor of her son would have on the future of police relations in the U.S. So far, Dallas City Council members have agreed unanimously to the proposal for renaming a part of the street in honor of Botham Jean. But they decided to take things a step further by proposing a renaming of the entire street. Lamar Street, as it is now named, passes in front of the Dallas Police Department's headquarters. Jean hopes that renaming the street would serve as a daily reminder to Dallas police officers of their responsibility to serve and protect. The proposal will come before the full Dallas City Council for approval in December. The street that will be renamed to Bofamsha Boulevard is the street on which this, the Dallas Police Department sits on. So that for me is significant because every single police officer would have to drive on Bofamsha Boulevard to get to work. Every check that they receive, their mail, is going to be addressed to the Bofamsha Boulevard. So that will bring back to them what was done to Bofam. And I think it, it really shows the significance of his death and how he died um, to not only the city of Dallas, but to every St. Lucia and to all of us. Jean says news that U.S. officials wanted to rename not just part of Lamar Street in Dallas to Botham Jean Boulevard, but rather the entire street, has been comforting given that the motion for consideration of the lawsuit against Amber Geiger and the city of Dallas was denied. The wrongful death lawsuit, unfortunately, I got news yesterday that um, the motion which was filed for reconsideration was denied by a judge. So my attorneys are now going into appeal. So the process is much longer than we thought. But that is the lawsuit against Amber Geiger and the city. Um, the lawsuit against the apartment complex is still it's going. Um, we have not received a response yet, but there is a period of 60 days within which the defendants, in this case Southside Flats, would have to file their response. Alison Jean stands squarely behind the Black Lives Matter movement and the need for police reform to ensure that police shootings and police brutality do not continue to snuff out black lives. According to the director of the St. Lucia National Trust, Bishnu Tulsi, the trust is not only supportive of calls to enact an Antiquities Act, but has already drafted a copy of what the act should entail. As for comments by Minister for Culture, Fortuna Belrose, that existing legislation needs only to be tweaked, Tulsi says this is far from the truth. Following calls by national archivist Margot Thomas for the enactment of an Antiquities Act, Director of the St. Lucia National Trust, Bishnu Tulsi, has revealed that the trust had already been in discussions with government on this course of action. However, he noted that following a meeting with the Ministry of Planning, things have hit a standstill. We have been talking with the Ministry of Physical Planning um, and a few other stakeholders on reviewing it. But um, a, a number of things, uh, that process has stalled. And we hope that um, we could pick it up again sometime. We will talk with Margot to see how we could collaborate on this. Tulsi further revealed that the trust is in communication with international partners in Mexico to compare a draft Antiquities Act prepared by the National Trust with similar legislation which has proven successful in Central America. He believes that the window of time for St. Lucia to experience similar success with the enactment of an Antiquities Act is growing narrow. We are also currently working with the government of Mexico, the local embassy, to de develop a project proposal. And in that proposal is included the Antiquities Bill and to get some expert advice from them because we understand they have one. They have promised to do a, 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 an English translation and share it with us. So that work is ongoing, but passing a law is a long process, and um, we are hoping that it will happen sooner rather than later. The National Trust Director says though there is legislation guiding the removal of artifacts from the island, it is very unlikely that customs officers have the resources to properly uphold these laws when screening visitors. 
Tosi went on to explain that the existing legislation focuses on a very narrow ideology of what an artifact is. Antiquities um, legislation will have to speak to issues of ownership, for example, issues of how developments can proceed and, and whether a development on an historic site should include an, an, an impact assessment, an archaeological impact assessment. What do you do with the things you find? Who owns them? There are a whole range of things, and antiquities are not just the things you uncover from the ground. It will also cover buildings, you know, buildings some like the prison. Um, would be a building that would be listed under the Antiquities Act and what you can and cannot do with it. He believes that recent activities, including the sale of St. Lucian artifacts online and the demolition of the royal jail, signify the need to fill the loopholes in current legislation. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. On Thursday, the 17th of September, the St. Lucia Labour Party opened its doors and cut the ribbon to its campaign headquarters. Leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierce, says the opening of the headquarters signals that the party is ready for the elections whenever it is called. The party also unveiled its slogan. The St. Lucia Labour Party was in a festive mood on the evening of Thursday 18th as they officially presented to the public the campaign headquarters of the party. The office is located in the constituency of Castro. East in Independence City. Leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierre, says the party is ready to serve the people of St. Lucia. This evening, we are not only opening our campaign headquarters, but also presenting the theme of our campaign. I have always been a people centered silver leader. Whether it has been in my own business, as a parliamentary representative for Castries East, or as a cabinet minister. It is for this reason that I am proud of my record of service to my country and ready to continue serving my people at another level. I am morally obligated to be a servant of the people because that is the reason why any politician or any political party comes to public life, to be of service to the people of the country. For this very reason, our campaign will adopt no further future. Our message is concise. The prescription is clear because the prognosis is even clear. The United Oldest Party government has failed to understand its electoral mandate, which is that the first responsibility is to the people. He says the party has core fundamental values that will be of great use to the country, given the state that the current administration has the island in. At the official opening of the headquarters, the slogan for the 2020-2021 general elections was also revealed, putting you first. Newly appointed Senator Lisa Jawair gave a brief overview of what the slogan means to the people of St. Lucia. The The Labour Party says the party is dedicated to building a society where its people are treated fairly and equally and the needs of the people are always put first. The party has promised that in the coming weeks, the public will be hearing in full details their plans for the country if they are elected into office. Due to COVID-19, the launch was streamed live via the party's social media page. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzag. Castry Southeast MP Guy Joseph recently toured ongoing projects in his constituency. Work is ongoing on the rehabilitation of the Labay Daycare Center. The scope of work includes the installation of a new roof, complete rehabilitation of the building's interior, and upliftment of the yard. Given the situation um, with COVID and the need to have additional space for the children, 
we had some repairs that needed to be done because the building had been uh, deemed unfit for a while. The children, they were moved to the cul-de-sac decay. But given the constraints of space at this point in time, it is necessary to undertake some repairs. So through the um, community development project, we are doing some major repairs, the changing of the roof and the fixing of the yard and general upgrade of the Labe Community Center, which is primarily used as a government daycare for a number of children in the area. Another project that the MP says he is pleased to see progressing smoothly is the final phase of the Formage Road Rehabilitation. The new asphalt surface is currently being laid. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. There's more coming up after the break.